Good afternoon. I'm Paul Erickson, Bishop of the Greater Milwaukee Synod, and it is a joy and a delight to welcome you to the service of ordination and installation for Jessica Kowalski to serve here at Reformation Lutheran Church in Brookfield. Uh, just a few notes on the service. Uh, there will uh, later be an offering, and the plates will be passed around old school style, um, and you'll be asked to uh, make an offering as you choose to support the ministry of Courage MKE. Uh, there will also be Holy Communion later in this service. We'll give some additional instructions about that, but that will be kind of a continuous fashion coming forward by the center aisle here. And then after worship, you're all welcome to stay for refreshments following the service. Is there anything else that you think folks should know? We're good to go? Then let's stand and sing our opening hymn, verses 1 through 4. Hear this greeting. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, you build your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and you instituted the office of the ministry of word and sacrament so that the apostolic and prophetic work might continue throughout the ages. Grant that Jessica Kowalski, now to be ordained, may carry out this ministry faithfully in the power of your spirit, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today is from Numbers chapter 11. Yahweh said to Moses, 
Bring me 70 of Israel's elders who are known to you as leaders and officials among the people. Have them come to the tent of meeting, that they may stand there with you. I will come down and speak with you there, and I will take some of the power of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. They will share the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to carry it alone. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is our psalm today, is Psalm 121, and we will uh, share that responsively. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. Yahweh won't let our footsteps slip. Our guardian never sleeps. The guardian of Israel will never slumber, never sleep. Yahweh is our guardian. Yahweh is, is our shade, with God by our side. The sun cannot overpower us by day, nor the moon at night. Yahweh guards us from harm, guards our lives. Yahweh guards our leaving and our coming back.
That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> the second reading is from the fourth chapter of Ephesians. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to be one hope when you were called, one savior, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is, Christ. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Word of God, word of life. To John the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When Jesus had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and sovereign, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your sovereign and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send accepts me. And whoever accepts me accepts the one who sent me. The word of God. Thanks be God. You may be seated. I had the privilege of being Jess's home pastor for many, many years at Resurrection Lutheran Church. And um, knowing Jess since before she started this journey, actually, uh, teaching in one of the synods programs called Diaconia, where I taught her um, early church history. And so those are our beginnings way back there with Constantine and Augustine and uh, Irenaeus, all the, the whole bunch of them. But, you know, when Jess sent me the lessons for today and I read this lesson of the foot washing, I was very moved by it. In the COVID years, 2021, when things we all know were just kind of crazy and our congregation was basically shut down, 
but we would tape services and um, people could watch them online. And for Monday Thursday, I remember, instead of having where the whole congregation was invited to come forward to have their feet washed, Jess came forward. And as I knelt down to wash her feet, we were both going through some pretty tough times. And I remember the congregation was singing the song, Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. And we both just cried as that song was sung over and over, and I washed her feet. And I remember thinking what a beautiful human being she was, not because she was so strong and had it all together, but because she was so honestly present in her vulnerability. And when I was reflecting on that today, I thought it's one of the reasons I think Jess would be a magnificent pastor. Why you people of Reformation will be blessed through the ministry you do together with her as your called pastor. Because she's not afraid to be real, to be vulnerable, to be fully human. And to me, that gets at the heart of what this whole Christian faith is about. That God, the creator of all, became human, became one of us, lived among us, suffered and died out of love and only then was raised by the power of God. But taught us that being human, being fully present, that's beautiful. In the early church history, one of the things that we talked about is that a sacrament is a visible sign of an invisible grace. That things like baptism, the word being preached, the meal being celebrated, sins being forgiven, the conversation and consolation that you share with one another, those means of grace are the way that God's amazing, mysterious, undeserved love comes to us, to each one of us, in the specific ways we need it. And then we share that. You know, in the early church, the church was sort of um, a very grassroots movement until the emperor of Rome, Constantine, said, I'm going to make Christianity the, the religion of the land. And so from 325, the church and the state have been wed together. And over and over, it seems to me, as I look through the history of the church's life and as through the challenges of pastors and other leaders in the church, is how do we be the living body of Jesus and not some hierarchy with people on top and people below? It's the temptation in any organization is to think of yourself like a pyramid with someone on top. And I guess I'm here to remind you and Jess today, you're not calling her to be the person on top. You're calling her to be the person who'll wash your feet. And if she's lucky, you'll wash her feet too. You'll be servants one to the other and servants to those who are in need because the church was not meant to be a hierarchy, but a living body where the gifts of each of us are celebrated and we are more fully alive when all of those gifts are used. One more story from the early church. There was a time in the third century when there were six deacons of Rome. One of them was St. Lawrence, and he was the deacon who was in charge of the treasury of the church. And one of the 
popes at the time, became rather greedy and made a decree that any of the bishops who died in office, all of their wealth would go to the church. And so they started sort of mysteriously dying off. <laughs> Sorry, Paul, just, just a story. <laughs> yeah, right. But all this wealth was accumulated and St. Lawrence was in charge of it. And this greedy pope said, St. Lawrence, I want you to give to me all of the riches of the church. And he said, can you give me three days? And so St. Lawrence, this deacon, went out and gave those riches he had accumulated to all of the poor and lowly in the kingdom. And he brought them all with him before the Pope, these crippled folks, blind, lame, indigent, and he said, Pope, here, here are the riches of the church. Well, St. Lawrence was burned at the stake. <laughs> but you know, that's, uh, that's sort of the call to this Christian life. Die and be raised from the dead over and over again. Sometimes with St. Lawrence, literally, but in all of our lives, if we're honest and real with one another, it happens over and over again. Jess, you are not afraid to be real. Please do not forget that your beauty and the power that the Spirit gives you for leadership come through your brokenness, not just your blessedness that is all, has it all together. Share who you are. You are an amazing, intelligent woman with great compassion. I am excited for you people of Reformation to have Jessica as your pastor. And I pray that all of you continue to be real together so that through you, you might be a means of grace, of God's freely given, undeserved love to those whom the world deems most lowly. Another verse in that hymn that we sang together just went like this. I will weep when you are weeping. When you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. That is my pledge to you, friend. Till we've seen this journey through, I'm here for you, and I am for you, and I am blessed through you.
standing i just have a few words before we begin this is why we're here today right this is the rite of ordination uh, we recognized in the christian tradition that all the baptized are called to be ministers of the gospel and some of us are set apart for specific kinds of service within the body of christ and today we celebrate the the jess Kowalsa is to be set aside set apart for ministry of word and sacrament. Note it does not say set above or set beneath, but set apart to walk alongside you, as Mary pointed out in the sermon, to serve among you and to serve with you as together we serve the world. Uh, we recognize today that Jess is called to be a minister in the Church of Christ. She's called by this congregation, uh, but we are going to ordain her into the Church of Christ. So you all have a job to do. You're going to have you're going to be speaking today, not just on your own behalf or on behalf of this congregation but behalf of the entire Church of God and Jesus Christ. Later, we will then also install her as a pastor of this specific congregation, but first, we will now have her presented for ordination. I present for ordination to the Ministry of Word and Sacrament, Jessica Ruth Kowalski, who has been prepared, examined, and approved for this ministry, and who has been called by the Church to this ministry through Reformation Lutheran Church. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. This is a cross that was just presented. It was a gift to Pastor Mary in her ordination, and she now passes it on to, to Jess today. All baptized Christians are called to share in Christ's ministry of love and service in the world to the glory of God and for the sake of the whole human family and the whole creation. According to apostolic usage, you are now to be entrusted with the office of word and sacrament in the one holy Catholic Church by the laying on of hands and by prayer. A reading from John. Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, 
All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jessica, before Almighty God, to whom you must give account, and in the presence of this assembly, I ask, will you assume this office, believing that the church's call is God's call to the ministry of word and sacrament? I will, and I ask God to help me. The church in which you are to be ordained confesses that the Holy Scriptures are the word of God and are the norm of its faith and life. We accept, teach, and confess the Apostles, Nicene, and Athanasian creeds, we also acknowledge that the Lutheran confessions are true witnesses and faithful expositions of the Holy Scriptures. Will you therefore preach and teach in accordance with these Holy Scriptures and these creeds and confessions? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? Will you pray for God's people, nourish them with the word and the sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? Will you give faithful witness in the world through word and deed that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Amen. Please arise as we lift the prayers to God on high. With the whole people of God in Jesus Christ, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the Holy Catholic Church, that filled with your love, it may hunger for truth and thirst after righteousness. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For all members of the church, that they may serve you in true and godly lives. God of mercy, hear our prayer. For Jessica Kowalski, called to the ministry of word and sacrament in the church, that sustained by your Holy Spirit, she may carry out this ministry with joy and a spirit of bold trust. Serve your people, build up your church, and glorify your name. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For all ministers of word and sacrament, for all ministers of word and service, for Paul Erickson, our bishop, that together with all the, those responsible for the care and nurture of your people, they may support one another in serving Christ. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the peace of the church, that our divisions may be overcome, so that united in Christ, we may serve the world and bear witness to the good news. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may proclaim the gospel and in humble love serve all in need. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and their leaders, that they may work for justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the whole creation that everything you have made may fulfill your purpose and that we may exercise care for your di diverse gifts. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, the lonely, the forgotten, and all who suffer. 
for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. For the glorious company of all the saints, those who have died in faith and those who live in certain hope, we praise you that their witness may give us courage until the day of Jesus Christ. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Remain standing as we sing the, hymn, sing the hymn of invocation. This time I invite any rostered ministers present who would like to gather around Jess as we begin this part of the service. Let's see, gather around here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. We bless you for your infinite love in Christ our Lord, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. We thank you that by his death, your son overcame death, and that raised by your mighty power, he gives us new life. We praise you that having ascended into heaven, Christ pours out his gifts abundantly on the church, making some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip your people for their work of ministry and for building up the body of Christ. 
Jess, would you please kneel? As the roster ministers lay hands upon Jess, I invite all of those to lift your own hands in a sign of blessing in whatever way feels comfortable for you. Could you hold this book in one hand and put one hand on it? Thank you. Eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Jess and fill her with the gifts of grace for the ministry of word and sacrament. Bless your servant's proclamation of your word and administration of your sacraments so that your church may be gathered for praise, strengthened for service. Make Jess a faithful pastor, a patient teacher, a wise counselor. Grant that in all things, Jess may serve without reproach so that your people may be renewed and your name be glorified in the church. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. You all may return to your seats. As a symbol of service now, just as family will be placing this red stole around her shoulders. You gonna help? Go ahead, you can take that part, yeah. Receive this stole as a sign of your work and live in obedience to the Lord Jesus, serving his people and remembering this promise. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You may rise. Hear the words of the apostles. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. And again, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you guardians to feed the church of God obtained with the blood of God's own Son. And again, tend the flock of God that is in your charge, not under compulsion, but willingly, not for sordid gain, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those in your charge, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will win the crown of glory that never fades away. And again, think of us in this way as servants of Christ and stewards of God's mysteries, Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Jess, care for God's people. Bear their burdens. Do not betray their confidence. So discipline yourself in life and teaching that you preserve the truth, giving no occasion for false security or illusory hope. Witness faithfully in word and deed to all people. Give and receive comfort as you serve within the church. Be of good courage, for God has called you, and your labor in the Lord is never in vain. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, may he make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Will you all please rise as you are able and respond to these questions as I ask you, assembled as the people of God and speaking for the whole church, will you receive Jess as a messenger of Jesus Christ and sent by God to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard her as a servant of Christ? Will you pray for her? Will you help her? Will you honor her for her work's sake and in all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? Let it be acclaimed that Jessica Kowalski is a called and ordained minister of the word and sacrament of the Church of Christ. She has Christ's authority to preach the word of God and administer the sacraments, serving God's people together 
as together we bear God's, God's creative and redeeming love to all the world. Amen. Thanks be to God. Woohoo! But wait, there's more. <laughs> Having been authorized by the church to install Jessica Ruth Kowalski, our coworker in the gospel, as pastor of this congregation, I now ask for certification of this call. After prayerful deliberation, we of Reformation Lutheran Church have called Jessica Ruth Kowalski as pastor. I present Jess for installation. Jess, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you carry out your duties in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Jess, the office of pastor is now committed to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome Jess again as pastor of this congregation. <laughs> Peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please, please share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace. the offering.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now as we are bold to pray as our Savior Jesus has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, for all is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated.
Please rise in body or spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the precious gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, almighty and gracious God, that you have fed us with heavenly food and the body and blood of your Son, uniting us through him in the communion of the Holy Spirit. As you have again raised up among us your faithful servant for the ministry of word and sacrament, grant that we, with Jess, may joyfully serve you all our days and finally rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We will sing our sending song, number 538, The Lord Now Sends Us Forth, after which the rostered ministers will gather with Jess for some photos up front here, and other family members may come and gather photos. So we'll be doing that up front, and then we'll go out and join the feast. But let us sing our closing hymn. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. All right. Let's gather up here.